Microsoft Ignite. Uh, if you want to know what they did in uh, semiconductors, uh, check out the Data Center, More Insights and Strategy Data Center podcast or the 6.5 podcast. I covered all of that. But uh, Mel, related to Copilot, Teams, uh, Microsoft 365, and, and Studio, they had some pretty big announcements. Yeah, I get the fun stuff. No offense. <laughs> No, actually, you, you, you guys. Um, I I did watch. Um, I I did watch the data center podcast. Um, today, and you guys had some interesting interesting topics there. But I think this is. They had some really great updates. I think, especially for teams, some some good things. Um, from like an end user experience, that I think, um, are expected, but wanted. Um, and needed kind of the experience in users from like Copilot, Compose, the pre canned prompts. Those, the pre canned prompts, I think, are really needed. I think everybody seems to think that Copilots are going to be magic. And this is funny. I Yesterday I saw this on um, Forbes tri Twitter that um, somebody, I think it was like a CTO of, I think it was Cigna, um, was called out for saying that, um, called out in a good way for saying that co-pilots are like interns. Well, I said this months ago, I actually said it on stage at um, Zoomtopia, that a co-pilot is not going to do everything for you, but it is going to help you. It's going to like kind of get you there to like an intern would. It's not yeah. client ready work. It's not customer ready work, but it will help you get there. But I think what Microsoft has done here, and I, you know, others have done the same with these pre-canned prompts, is really helpful. So if it says, you know, ask to write a summary, or I, I can't even like think off the top of my head of like what the, the pre-canned prompts are, but it saves you the time just from not having to key it in. But it kind of takes the information and says, well, what what's this person likely needs to ask me to get the get to the information they need. So the pre-canned prompts um, on collaboration, there's Copilot in Whiteboard. So when people are brainstorming, it'll just um, populate Whiteboard with the ideas. There's things like catch up on meeting, in chats, in teams. Um, and then there's kind of some more advanced features like noise reduction, isolation features. Um, and then there's actually a really cool feature. I don't know if you saw this, where it will clean up your background um, so like AI features where it'll take your background and not blur it, but it'll actually like clean it up. So if you have an empty back, uh, an empty shelf, it'll like put books and knickknacks and make it pretty or decorate it for the holidays or whatever. Um, so that was kind of a, a fun little thing. And then they also have this new mesh, which is 3d immersive experiences, um, this is, you know, again, like the, these are like avatars and things like that, where I'm not sure how much adoption they'll get from this, but it is, it's an option if people like it and they want it. Um, I think I'm showing my age when I kind of say these things that are like, yeah, I'm not sure how much I would use it, but it depends on, I guess, how much people want that in-person interaction. And if they're totally working from home and they want to be in a, you know, immersive environment, I guess we'll maybe I'll get Anshul's take on that, and we'll and I'll I'll write a research note about it with him. But um, and then on the other side of that, there's a lot more um, sort of IT control and security measures in place. So some interesting things, especially when it when we're talking about um, in the you know AI era. So watermarking and um, on documents and video, so to protect sensitive information from leaving a protected environment tailored um, privacy settings. So if you want Copilot to take notes in your meeting, but not record it, there's a setting for that. So just kind of a lot more control from the IT perspective, but also from the end user perspective for privacy and security. So there was a lot. Um, I'm probably only getting 20 to 20 to 50%, maybe. Um, but there were a lot of updates. And most of them are available from, you know, kind of the this month to early next year sort of rollout. Um, and then 
So I think that's sort of where we are on on uh, Teams and Microsoft 365. What I think, um, I thought, and this is like a little, it, it's, it's within the modern work and somewhat, but not necessarily collaboration. But I really thought that this, I don't know if you saw this, but this Microsoft Copilot Studio, this is basically like a build your own chat bot. Um, yeah, it's very and it's, similar to uh, what OpenAI did with uh, its agents yes. uh, last week. Yes. Yep. It's essentially the same thing within my within Microsoft 365. So it's a low code solution. Anybody can build the chatbot within their own like business environment to to create a custom copilot. So they have the integrations to connect to say like your CRM or your HCM, all of your people, your people tech, um, and then, you know, just ask questions against that data. So you can just do product queries, you can do any sort of, you know, it will build both graphical and conversational interactions to answer any sort of queries. So I thought that was pretty cool. I like it. Yeah, it is, and it leverages. Um, and I'm trying to keep uh, things brief because we only have. And it, uh, and it chat GPT agents. Um, you can integrate those in here, but in the Microsoft environment, you're going to have a certain set of people, particularly enterprises, who I think will be more comfortable going the uh, the Microsoft route, even though the back end is um, Chat GPT. 